This poem is on the Gettysburg's Review website, gettysburgreview.com, and it is Budget Travel Through the Universe by Albert Goldbarth. We can rig a supernova in a single laptop jiffy. Ditto werewolf transformations. Every feral hair is given its credible gumption and its little jacket of oil. As for aliens summoned out of the holes in space itself, or crackerjack on aliens. A seven-story studio exists to make their travel to our planet a persuasive thing. And yet today, at a festival of silent film, I'm moved by what was possible in 1910. A city street is empty, then the camera stops. A man's position standing in the street, and then the camera rolls again. Could be a man from the moon has suddenly appeared on our world, without even the help of a pair of blunt tip sewing basket scissors. The fastest and the vastest. Some loud trumpeted ad slogan a while ago for yet another uber global multi zillion dollar tele cyber fiber transport system. Micro trips and oil tankers and a great dance of delivery. Eight ton robot arm and a transatlantic corridor and satellite bounce. But it can be more modest and still arrive on time and with adequate flash. The fact is, shooting stars are between the size of a grain of rice and a grain of sand, and everybody's consequential journey through the fallopian tube. The dreams came. She was looking at herself in the small mirror that hung above the washstand, and the face that gazed back from the glass was the wondering, unmarked face of a child. Paula Volsky, the Grand Ellipse. Is innocence merely the absence of experience? I.e., can it be passive? Or must it be willed? My friends and I discussed this sticking point one night. The moon is pale, almost aqueous, and we're talking. Then it's adamantly solid, like a throne room gong. We're talking. Then it's the ghost of a moon, already almost lost in the approaching pearlescence of dawn. It turns out we can travel assuredly through time by simply sitting in our chairs or on the floor and making lazy conversation. Just by having a metabolism, we can voyage into the future. Just by a pulse. By the immolation of calories. The moon is a baby's nail pairing. The moon is the huge, round resume of the career of light. The moon is a curd of afterglow. By the lines of a poem, by the chain of our breaths. And Paula Volsky goes on to say, but as she watched, the face altered and aged, shifting through the phases of adolescence, early and full maturity, middle age, and thence to shallow old age. An odyssey, as surely as Ulysses' ocean going is an odyssey, but not by oars, by the blinks of an eye. In 1951, as Henrietta Lacks was dying of cancer in a Maryland hospital, one astute physician there removed a pea-sized sample of her tumor to see if its cells would grow in a test tube, something never achieved before, and these became the very first human cells to thrive and multiply outside of the body. Now called HeLa cells, today there are so many that they outweigh what would have been Henrietta Lacks' living body 400 times, and have been used around the world in studies on polio, leukemia, protein synthesis, the effects of nuclear radiation, genetic control mechanisms, and more. The sun has set, but the low and swollen belly of the moon won't let its ruddy light completely die out of the sky. So this will serve us as a symbol, meaning we could end, right now, with the life of Henrietta Lacks. And yet we can't, for Henrietta Lacks has no immediate end. In life, her longest journey had been from her dirt-poor town in rural Virginia into Baltimore. In afterlife, her cells were carried aboard the earliest space flights for experiments on zero Gs and cosmic ray bombardment. Low and swollen moon, she's been there. Moon of the gnashing wolf, moon of the 
over tumulating tide waters, moon of the itch of love, of the gnash of love, of the waters of love. We've all been there. Upstairs, my wife is sleeping, dreaming. What? How far is the tether unraveled? If life is a stem, by definition, its flowering grows outside of the stem. How short, how every day is the step between two worlds? The thickness of the skull? Of the skin? My wife's friend, Jane's young son, announced, in case we didn't know it, men have penises, women have agendas. That's a good one, yes? And I've been happy to have been issued passports into some of those agendas, to have traveled there. And always on the other side, I've been left breathless changed for a moment and lost in myself and breathless and breached on a foreign shore.